Hey, Get hey there, go. team. How we doing? Welcome to another fully booked daily quick little tips from us. Uh, as we're on this journey, as we're on the tour, travelling around Australia, we're in Bendigo right now. What a beautiful place. I had no idea. It's been ages since it's in Bendigo last. No idea it was such a beautiful town. We're in like the Botanic Gardens now, play space. Kids are entertained, hopefully, for long enough to get through this. Uh, and I wanted to really share, or we wanted to share today, <laughs> something that came up. It was just so clear in yesterday's session, in Warrnambool yesterday. And it has to do with what we call the health little ladder. So I'm going to show this here. Uh, do you want to flick that around as we're talking so you can yes. see? Yes. Here we go. So what I wanted to just share quickly, have a quick look at this. What we use this for is seeing exactly where different therapists sit in their business journey right now and what their next steps are going to be. So it's, it's something where uh, most of our clients, like literally 9 out of 10 of the people that we help, are sitting in the bottom part of this. They're sitting in the, the first couple of rungs where the main things that they need are more clients. Right? That's one of the first basic things that you need in business to make it viable to pay your own way is literally just get enough clients. Once that step is overcome, that's really what Fully Booked Without Burnout, the program is designed for. It does have a bit of other stuff, a bit of future pacing, but the main driver for that is just making sure you've got a business that has enough clients that's fully booked without burnout, right? And we had yesterday at our event in Warrnambool, a lady who had actually done Fully Booked and was certainly in a place where the Fully Booked program uh, had got her where she wants to be. We've got our son making silly faces at us now here. Do you want to flick around and... Hey, there he is, <laughs> the crazy kid. All right, oh, all right, back to us. Uh, she's at a place where she's done the program a little while ago, absolutely fully booked, but she's got a couple of staff members that aren't fully booked yet. And so we're really recognizing that she has moved up from that bottom sort of area to the next couple of stages, which is about systemization and building profile. And part of that is learning how to scale and manage a team or do other things in your business that are beyond just you getting fully booked. It's actually not the same. The things that get you to the place where you're fully booked are not always exactly the same as the skills and strategies that will take you to the next step of next step of actually being a leader in your business and in the community, sort of stepping up. It's literally like a ladder. It was just, I was in this place yesterday thinking about this woman and like, oh, this is just the absolute perfect time to bring in this in as an example. Do you want to talk through yeah, the strategies absolutely. we would actually give her at this point? Yeah, for sure. So what, what uh, the first one that we overcome in the ladder on as a newbie, and newbie is not how long you've been in the industry, newbie is how many clients a week or how much money you're turning over in the business per week, is that it's all about overcoming fear. Hey, so this is probably a really good one for you as well. It's all about overcoming fear. Now, often as a newbie who's maybe generating, you know, one to five hundred bucks a week, it's about fear of: Am I good enough? Do I know enough? Will do this I even have? Work? Do I have the authority to treat the clients that I want to? Uh, you know, should I niche? How much do I charge? All the different, you know, all those questions that come up. Now, some people take twenty years to get over them and move through them, and some people take five minutes. You know, like there's no right or wrong here. It's just so. Now specifically, what, um, this is not going to work. I know, it's like, you come this way, come this way. There we go. You happy with that? It's doing weird hey, stuff nice. with the camera. That's All right, awesome. <laughs> so specifically, what you have to overcome is fear. Now, interestingly enough, when you move up the ladder, just like we were saying this person has, they've moved up into Explorer mm, and Rising probably. Star and the other ones yeah, that are there somewhere. that I can't read because you moved them on me. <laughs> I was about to read that. Successful. Uh, She's successful, probably sitting yeah. at successful. So she is sitting at successful. Now the challenge is if you get to successful, which is where you're generating two to four K a week, you're probably charging $90 a session, you might have one or two team members and you're starting to figure out how to scale. The challenge is, how do you overcome fear in order to become a leader? Because you, I can tell you, this person had no challenges at all. She completely believed in her skills, gifts, and her talents and ability as a therapist. There was no doubt in her mind she could do it. And she's good. The Absolutely, she's exactly, because she's great yeah. at what she does. The challenge is now, being able to have conversations with people who are not at the same level as her. It's how do you, when you start and everyone's friends and we're all good mates and it's all just working with okay staff. with staff, and then all of a sudden you're going, actually, I don't like what you're doing. Um, you're not getting the same results as me. Now it's costing me money in my business. And just know, this is not at all uh, an individual case. This is, we wrote this ladder because we see this all the time. And so there's a bottleneck in the business based on 
fear of how do I have challenging conversations. And so we know that in order for her to get to successful, from successful to scaled, and successful is where all the work happens, yeah? Like that is where we look at the time frame that you have to be in the business and you've got to do all the marketing, all the treatments, and manage your team, and set up your systems, and it's like, oh my, it's like a pressure cooker. There is so much going on at that level, and it feels like if it's going to be like this forever, I'm done. Tap out, you know. And it's almost like there's a moment where you go, it's either break or bust, you know. Like it's either make or break right now. I'm either just going to pull the pin because it would be so much easier for me to just go rent a room or go work for someone, yeah, someone or, else, or step back down the ladder. Step back down Some the ladder, yeah, exactly. That. And like, scale gonna, back yeah, down, yeah, you know. I, I'm done. I'm yeah. limiting myself back to where it was easy. Or we can push through and start to overcome some of the challenges that are at the more lower rungs. So for example, the idea here is that in order for her to move forward, she needs to learn how to have conversations with her team members to get her team members rocking out, to get them rebooking their clients. And then you've got to work on the marketing strategies to get them fully booked because it's totally different to marketing yourself. And so we know that there's a lot of challenges and some of it is figuring out what wasn't done properly down here if you've gotten up there without you know without sort of overcoming those challenges and then it's figuring out well what what does she need in order to be able to move forward and i love the health leader ladder because so many people look at it and go oh yeah 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 like i don't have that i don't have that I don't have that i'm up there and we forget that there's actually a bunch of stuff that may be because the next one, like the Explorer, is about getting clients. So if you haven't got enough clients in for your team members, it means you haven't learnt the stuff in relation to your team that's going to be able to take it forward. And I know when we were running our clinic, it was really, really important that I, I had a really great authority in our area as the health leader. However, I was just the leader. I wasn't the business. And a lot of our business came from the fact that our staff were awesome, that we had an amazing standard for treatment, and also an amazing standard for the standards that we held in the clinic. It was not by accident that when everybody walked in, when our clients walked in, we would smile, make eye contact, and welcome them. Hey James, great to have you in here. That, that was intentionally trained. And being able to say to someone, this is how we do it here and not at all feel worried or nervous or what will they think or oh my gosh what if they hate me you know i don't care because i know the way that my business works really 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 well and it is only through being able to have the confidence and the courage to say this is how we do it here mm. whether you like it or not and they will either step up which is super exciting or they'll step out and kind of outsell themselves. And if they don't, then there is a legal process that you need to follow, and it's business imperative. It's not about being liked, it's actually about your business moving forward and being able to become a health leader and not work so much in the industry. Can I say one more thing? Please. So I was gonna say, we often talk about the, the energy that you use in treatment, the hands-on, very personal, very uh, sort of connected and caring for that person. And then we sort of talk about, you know, to do the business side of things, you put your business hat on. Yeah. And we're usually talking about numbers and systems there. But actually, leadership of your team is like another hat. It's like the third hat. Because as well as having the very logical, yeah, numbers thing and the very caring uh, hands-on thing with your clients, then all of a sudden you need to have a leadership role. Now, leadership isn't like school teacher command. It's more about building team and knowing how to work with your staff while maintaining that, that headship of the business. So it's something that the earlier stages just don't necessarily prepare you for. You don't learn that stuff at the start. You don't learn that stuff as you're gaining lots of clients. It's not until you need it that you actually need to acquire those skills. And that's why I think this was just such a perfect example. Every time you level up, you sort of go up the ladder, you overcome those challenges, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, there's a whole new challenge waiting yeah, for me it's here. It's called higher quality higher challenges. Higher quality <laughs> challenges, that's right. And way better to have, because mm. you've got cash flow, you've got uh, more resources, more opportunities, more choice in making them. Yeah. But there's always new things to overcome, and it's yeah. super exciting, I love it. Yeah. And so never ever think, oh, I'm stuck. I'm at a place where no one has ever done this before, and you know, I've, I've reached the limit in my business because all you're seeing is another step, another challenge. Mm. And the stuff you've had to learn to get to where you are right now is great in that it's got you where you are, but mm. you're going to need to do new stuff to get to the new place. 
and there's a lot of help you can get around with that too. A lot of training, a lot of tactics, a lot of insights, and you can connect with people who've done it before and be able to push through to that place as well. I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome stuff. We're going to wrap up there, guys. We're going to get ready for the Bendigo event. That's Sarah right, Bendigo Venice, event. We're very excited what, like to see you. An hour. About an hour. Less, so we're going to go. Less than an hour. Woo -hoo. Okay, <laughs> see ya. See ya.